Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis with another video to heckle and irritate my viewers. You know, people are always saying to me, Praxis, why do you have so few subscribers? It's videos like this, I think, largely. I think that they're important, so I keep doing them, but a lot of people don't want to hear it. Most people want to hear that, you know, the top reason you're going to die in SHTF is because you don't have the right survival knife, and here's the right one that you can buy for only, you know, X number of dollars. They don't want to hear that the top reason that you're going to die during SHTF is because things aren't maybe working properly up here, and that's what this video is about. Now, this locks into a video that I made a little bit ago about the unfolding crisis going on in the Midwest. Uh, there's a lot of flooding going on, there's more to come with the melting snow, and the video was about the possibility of rising food prices, you know, from all those agricultural losses. Now, there were two big things that people really got upset about. There were a lot of really uh, negative comments uh, about these two things, and one was that in that video, I suggested that historically speaking, right now, food prices are much lower than they have ever been before. A lot of people didn't feel that way. I guess they wish that food prices were even cheaper now than they have been in the past. Uh, you know, and I think some of it might have come down to the fact that I used the word now. I didn't specify exactly what now meant. And now doesn't mean right now this exact moment. I have no idea what food prices are right now this second. When I say now, I mean now, post-industrial, post-agricultural revolution, post-World War II, this era that we've been in with industrial agriculture that has really brought down the cost of food for people. Factoring for inflation, the fraction of your yearly income that people now are spending on food in the you know, modern Western world is much less than it was pre-industrial uh, agricultural revolution. There's all sorts of baggage that comes with industrial agriculture, but one positive is that it has made a lot of food available to people. That was one thing that people uh, kind of complained a lot about. But the number one thing that people complained about was the fact that I said that I thought it was crazy that there was one dollar meat available. People really got upset about that because I heard from a lot of people that just said, that's crazy. I've never seen one dollar meat. Uh, you know, get real. I was told to get real a lot. Um, you know, and I just kind of pulled the number one dollar, you know, out of thin air. It's just, you know, the idea is cheap meat. Uh, but I was just kind of curious, and I grabbed the local circular from just this week, and, you know, a lot of the stuff's like two bucks, five bucks, four bucks, ten dollars for meat. But right here, one dollar and fifty-nine cents for all-natural chicken thighs. By the way, all-natural doesn't mean anything. But one dollar and fifty-nine cents for uh, chicken thighs. I know that's like one dollar and fifty-nine cents. It's not exactly a dollar, but it's like a dollar and change. And really, I know that I've seen like... 89 cent like door buster deal like on Thanksgiving or something like that to get people into the door. But the fact of the matter is that it doesn't really matter whether I was right or wrong about dollar meat. As it worked out, I was right about it. But it doesn't really matter. That's really just minutia. It's a detail. And that's what this video is about, is the idea of people getting caught up in minutia, getting caught up in details and missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture of that video about agriculture was that there were going to be agricultural losses. That's going to have an effect on the market. You might want to react to that. The main point of the video wasn't people bitching and moaning about whether they could actually find dollar meat. It's kind of, it's a minor details. Sometimes details are important, sometimes they're not, and being able to tell the difference between those different circumstances is an important survival skill, and that's why I'm doing a video about this right now. It's important to your ability to survive to be able to tell when something's important or not when it comes to details. For example, oh my god, this entire building's burning down, let's get out of here. Well, actually, uh, there are some uh, rooms down in the basement which are not currently on fire. So, you know, to say that the building is, uh, you know, entirely on fire is inaccurate. That's not going to help your survival. Equally, if you have to bug out and you got to get out of an area, there is like some kind of an emergency, you know, fretting about like, oh, no, I lost my survival knife. I don't know where I put it in the car. I don't know where my emergency pack is. I need to grab my first aid kit. I need to go back to my vehicle to get something in order for me to flee this area. Oh, I don't know where my whatever is. Getting fixated on details as opposed to the big picture could really get you in trouble in an emergency situation. It's important to be able to differentiate between what's important and what is just a minor detail. Like I said earlier, we all have our ideas about what our plans would be if there was a crisis event, but if one of those little details of your plan doesn't work out, focusing on that is really going to be a problem for you. 
And I think that that's problematic for people and you can't buy your way out of that one. That's what the video is about. You can't, you know, there's no like, ooh, it's like $9.95, you can buy it and it'll solve all your problems. It's up here. It's the idea of not focusing on minutia. Figuring out what's really important, what's the big picture, and focusing on that. Not whether or not meat is exactly a dollar a pound. I bet it's actually cheaper sometimes. I bet there's 89 cent meat. Comment on that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.